Instructions went online. You caught me at a tea party right now. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm Pastor Marcus, OG, and here's a bunny. Have you ever wondered why you see so many bunnies at Easter time? There's a lot of fables and folklores and different beliefs of where that came from. But one thing's for sure, it has nothing to do with the Bible story. Uh, it has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus at all. You know, uh, I like bunnies. Um, God made bunnies. But if you really wanted a good representative, an animal that would represent Easter, a better choice would be a, a lamb. Why? Because the Bible says Jesus is the Lamb of God. And uh, we're going to explore today why Jesus was called the Lamb of God right after this. This is good tea. Hello kids, welcome to Super Chef International, the show where we teach you how to be a super chef. Today on Super Chef International we have a special treat for you. We are going to learn how to make squid ink waffles with Super Chef Japan, Chef Marimotta. Oh, uh, it seems Super Chef Japan will not be able to make it today. I guess he overslept. So instead, we have a show favorite, Chef Murph. Hey, everybody and everybody's buddy. Hello, Chef Murph. Thanks for stepping in today. Dude, you call me so often, I started renting an apartment across the street. <laughs> Poor Chef Morimoto. He must have had a hard time sleeping last night. When I can't sleep, I count sheep. When I can't sleep, I talk to the shepherd. He's awake all night, too. And speaking of sheep... I have a very special treat. I don't dare ask. Nope, it's not Sloppy Joe's. We're going to make sheep snacks. Sheep snacks? Like a plate full of grass? No, <laughs> it's not food for sheep. It's food that looks like sheep. We're going to be making adorable sheep out of cauliflower. This I gotta see. My helper OG will demonstrate. Take it, OG. sheep are so cute you almost hate to eat them you know people like sheep because they're known for being quiet gentle and innocent they would make great pets 
Do you know that Jesus was called the Lamb of God? Because he was innocent, right? Right. But also because followers of God had to sacrifice a lamb to cover their sins. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for all of our sins. He saved the lives of a lot of sheep, too. I guess he did. But more important is that he washed away our sin. That's why I have peace in my heart and I can sleep easily. So there you have it, folks. Another wonderful recipe from the files of Chef Murph. This is Helen, and we'll see you next time on Super Chef International. So Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Where does that come from? Well, in the New Testament, Jesus is called the Lamb of God more than 20 times. The first time is in John 1, 29, where John the Baptist sees him and he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, from the beginning, God had a rule for the people who followed him, and they had to take an innocent animal as a sacrifice for sins. It had to be without blemish. That means no spots, no defects. They would take it to the priest, and the priest would put it on the altar and kill it in such a way that the blood would flow from the animal. Uh, Leviticus 17, 11 says, blood makes payment for sins. And this was a temporary solution. This only covered the sins of a person for a time. And then uh, they had to periodically come back and, and do it again. Uh, what, was, what was God trying to teach us there? Well, he was showing that sin is so terrible that an innocent animal had to die so that um, those sins would be covered. Uh, sins are anything that you do that, that displeases God, any thoughts, any words, any deeds you have that displease God. And so um, Hebrews, Hebrews 9.21 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so um, can, a, can the blood of a sheep... Uh, Take away your sin? No, it can't. But what, the, what God was showing his people was a picture of the future of what Jesus would do later for us. And he would be the perfect sacrifice by dying on the cross for our sins. Wouldn't just cover us for a little while, but, for, but, it, but his power, the power of his blood, was capable of removing our sins. And so um, Jesus was spotless. Not in the fact that he had no birthmarks or that his skin was perfect in some way, but that he was spotless and that he lived a sinless life and he walked in perfect obedience to God. Now we're going to do a Bible story about a name, a guy named Barabbas. And uh, Barabbas has a few verses in the Bible. So what I've done is I've kind of made a dramatization of these verses in some ways. We don't know what Barabbas was thinking or what happened to him afterwards. So, so I've, I've just created this for my, for my own imagination in some ways. So I, what I want to encourage you is to go back and read the Bible for yourself. John 18 and 19 is where a lot of my verses come from, but all the Gospels tell about, about Barabbas. So we're going to go and we're going to look at the story right now. Barabbas stood in his cell looking between the bars. He deserved to be in prison and he knew it for murder. His punishment by law would be death, but he didn't know when it would happen. Instead, he sat in his cell waiting with bad food, little water, and lots of rats. That morning though, he heard noise outside the prison. It was the morning they brought Jesus before the Roman governor Pilate. Pilate began to question Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my followers would try to rescue me, Jesus said. Pilate turned back to the crowd. I don't see any reason to kill him. I usually set a prisoner free for Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? No, not him. We want Barabbas. 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 They began to shout. The killer, Pilate thought. Barabbas listened. He didn't see everything going on, but he did hear the crowd calling his name. Pilate gave Jesus to the soldiers to be beaten with a whip. They hit him with their fists. The soldiers made a crown of thorns and pressed into his head. Hey, king of the Jews, here's your crown. Pilate brought him out again. Here is the man you accuse. 
Rabbis heard footsteps coming to his cell. A key went in the lock, and the door swung open. The Roman guard stood there. Barabbas, the governor wants you. Barabbas stood before the people next to Pilate. He could see Jesus on the other side. He heard tales of that man before. He had healed a sick and turned water to wine. Even in his crowd, they saw Jesus as a hero. Which shall I release to you, Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas, the crowd shouted. Barabbas, Pilate told him. Get out of here. I never want to see your face again. He couldn't believe his ears. Free to go? How is this possible? He fled before they changed their mind. Not far from there was a hill called Golgotha. Two thieves were hung beside Jesus. Barabbas had met those thieves before in jail. They waited for death just like him. But they put Jesus in the middle. That should have been my cross, Barabbas said. He died in my place. You know, we don't know what happened to Barabbas after he was set free from prison, set free from his life sentence. You know, he could have, after that, said, I am so grateful to what Jesus did for me on that cross that I'm going to be a follower of his for the rest of my life. Or he could have said, you know, thanks for the gift, thanks for my life. I'm just going to live my own way now, go back to the crime he used to commit. Um, but I want to I tell you that you and I, in this story, are like Barabbas. You have a choice today, whether you're going to receive the gift that God gave you, or say, you know what, I'm just really not that interested. Um, Jesus took my sins. He took my cross. He took your sins and your cross. And so I want to invite you today and every day to say, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Lord God, I pray that, that you will forgive me of my sin, that I can be a follower of you, that I can be accepted. I'm accepted into your family, and I'm grateful for that. I pray your, your blessing over everyone watching this right now. I pray that we would all choose today to follow you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time. Go. Oh. Hey, I'm Hi Kids. I'm Joe Lyon, and this is OG. Um, this is the part of the show that's created by you. Last week, we did a fort building challenge, right, OG? And so let's take a gander who completed the challenge. First, here's Fort Caleb. Now, the fort that Miles and Marshall made. Here is Nolan and Jonas's fort. All right, and here is Fort Declan. And here is Fort OG. That's you. And then finally, Fort Masha. All right, so now we're gonna draw a name. OG's gonna draw a name from the hat from all the fort builders. So what do we got here? Caleb. Caleb! Caleb! Caleb won the fort building, okay. Good job. So, um, let's see now. Next week, for, or congratulations Caleb first. Now, this week's challenge, we talked about the Lamb of God. So this week, you get to make a lamb. We made ours out of cauliflower, so you can make it out of whatever you have. You can even turn your dad into a sheep. Not that I'm trying to influence the vote or anything. So, uh, until next week, happy sheeping! Bye! Come on.